The doctor said we should move somewhere quiet, away from the city. Um, it wasn't pitched to me as, uh, as, as an Australian film, believe it or not. Um, it was just pitched as a Western and uh, as an offer. And I remember reading it and then um, sort of only after that, obviously loving the script, I was first amazed at the fact that it was a sort of a first time writer director because the lack of exposition in the script was really showed a, a great sense of maturity from Patrick because so many sort of first time sort of writers feel the need to sort of explain everything and almost sort of over explain and sort of spoon feed the audience too much and he was a writer who was giving the audience credit. The fact that it was an Australian film just happened to be the sort of the cherry on top and then sort of speaking to Patrick and realising it how much he had gone through to get to this point, that he had mortgaged his house, that um, I, I thought, well, he, he's obviously a little bit crazy, so that we, we, I, know, I, know, I know we're gonna get on in that front. Uh, and he kept reiterating how hard the shoot was gonna be, and that was sort of appealing to my masochistic nature. Conway was convicted of murdering his wife and the attempted murder of a Red Hill police officer. I guess Red Hill came from a place of sort of uh, deep frustration of not being able to try, uh, not being able to get my first film up, and um, you know I'd written this was probably the, the this is the, the fourth script I've written, and uh, and each time I, think, I guess you know my first film it was like a forty million dollar action thriller, <laughs> and then uh, the next one was like twenty mil, and then the, <laughs> you know you get to ten and then five, and you're like you know what. I'm actually just going to go and shoot a movie up in the high country with, with no money and, uh, and we're going to go and shoot it and go off and make this, 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 this movie uh, without distributors and, and just go and make a goddamn movie. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I guess over the years I, I had a successful run doing commercials and the, the benefit of that is you get to shoot all, all around the world with, with the best uh, crew and you work with the best suppliers and you work with a really a lot of talented people and uh, that allowed me to create the relationships that I was able to pull in to, to make Red Hill the way we made it. We shot the movie in four weeks in a small town called Omeo in high country Victoria and basically you know I, I just went and pulled in every favour I could from the world of commercials and all the relationships I'd, I'd sort of built from short films and uh, and you know, I, I guess I, I looked at all my favourite filmmakers. I sort of had an epiphany. I think Greg McLean's here tonight somewhere. Yeah, he's up the back. Yeah, good one. Um, get out. Help <laughs> me. And I, I wrote a list of all my favourite filmmakers. You know, I look at the Coen Brothers and 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 uh, George Miller and um, and Christopher Nolan and and guys like that. Uh, you know, they and Robert Rodriguez, of course, who's the godfather of. But every single one of them, to get their first film made, just went and mortgaged their house and sold their body parts and did whatever they had to do, literally, to just get your first film made. So. Jimmy Conway rides into this town. He'll be bringing hell with him. Go on, Ron. But yeah, it was, it was just a very sort of communal uh, sort of way to make a film. You don't, you don't get that this day and age because it was, you know, coming from... Hollywood, I hate saying that, but um, <laughs> where they, they tend to throw money instead of creativity at problems. Um, this was a, a, the, the one way and the only way that we were going to get through this film. I mean, we were shooting in sort of sub zero temperatures in four weeks um, in this small little town with so many things, so many factors that were against us and things that we compromised. And um, it's funny though, in retrospect, in thinking about it now, more I guess in nostalgia, that if we would have had more money and more time, I don't think we would have made a better film. And it's the, the compromises that we made that I've now learned to love. And, uh, uh, you know, I think that it's that rawness and toughness that people... You know, I guess I was drawn to Omeo to make the film because I found, like, you know, you look at this town in the, in the 1890s, it had a population of 40,000 people and it matched Melbourne, and it was one of Australia's biggest gold rush towns. Now there's 120 people that live there, like literally. So it's, it's, you, look, you, you look at a town, and you say there's an inherent tragedy in that. And I felt like that was a beautiful sort of modern day setting for a Western. Really hilarious night. There's a, the, the, the scene where uh, Ryan comes face to face. Is this where I went to hospital? Yeah. Was that hilarious? Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. And you had the stunt double when I took over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
No, we, we, uh, where Ryan comes face to face with Jimmy on the street and Ryan's looking in the car and slowly turns around. Uh, there was, you know, and he runs away and Jimmy's popping off a shotgun. Uh, like, literally, if you pan the camera slightly to the left, You'd probably see like 150 of the, the, the 120. town. 120. 120, sorry. They're all standing there with scooters. <laughs> just looking like it's live theater or something. I, I run past them as we take. And then as I'm coming back, they're all giving their two cents worth. Like, oh, mate, maybe next time try picking up the gun. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really hilarious. So I had to appease not only them, but Patrick as well. So it was quite a few people. It was actually really interesting because I think uh, international audiences, the, you know, the cliched notion of what Australia looks like, like literally for people that live in Europe or America and they haven't been to Australia, they actually just think we live in a desert with kangaroos. And, uh, and, and so we, we, we had the world premiere at the Berlin Film Festival and, and I just had a queue of people afterwards saying, what country did you shoot that in? And I was like, you're joking, right? This is Australia. Where's the backup? There isn't any. What the hell's going on here? You tell me, son. If it would have been shot in the city, you would have seen a lot more of those sort of uh, modern things that you maybe made it, might have associated more with it, an Australian thing. But this is, when you're going to these sort of country towns, they're, they're not following the, the latest trends or anything like that. They're quite often a good 20, 30 years behind and just living in this period of, of where, where nothing really sort of progresses. And then outside of that, the fact that it's a Western, for some reason, uh, immediately gives it like an American feel, but people tend to forget that we can make our own versions of Westerns and do it very well. And like Patrick's already alluded to, we had our own version of the Wild West, like the Gold Rush days and all that, and even sort of not before that. Um, and every, every Western sort of is concentrated and is focused, and the underlying subtext to it is a moral code. And I think everyone can identify to that. Uh, and obviously this story is about revenge, redemption and sacrifice and it's an exploration of someone with a very strong moral compass who is put into a, a real shitstorm of a situation and has to somehow grow and survive. But I, what it made me realise, that was the first time I'd worked back in Australia in eight years and it made me realise just what sort of raw, untapped talent there is out here. Like when. I, I know I'm going to be very proud in 10 years' time when I look back and say that I was in the very first Patrick Hughes film. In the same way that the, the actors who were in the, the Coen Brothers' first film look back and sort of think, well, I was there when. Um, there's... You know, I'll be proud that I got you for nothing. <laughs> Yeah.